Uh, really proud of our kids. Uh, staff did an outstanding job of, of uh, getting our guys ready. Got to commend our scout team. I thought they gave our defense a great look on what we're going to see from uh, Vandy from an offense perspective. That offense is a, definitely a hard offense to defend. Um, a lot of, left, a lot, left a lot of meat on the bone, so to speak. We kind of shot ourselves in the foot, but our guys are resilient. They kept fighting, kept believing. And, you know, that's part of a championship football team. Uh, when you can answer the bell, uh, when you go down and not panic, uh, those are the things that's part of our DNA that we got to continue to uh, mold and create here. Uh, open up for questions. Can we start last week? Uh, you talked about how you thought that one against Chad would be good. Yes, I mean, so much parity in, in, in college football. I mean, you're going to be in close games. I mean, with the um, with the helmet communication, it seems like everyone's playing a little bit slower. So if things are kind of close, I mean, it, it's going to come down to the last two or three minutes of ball game. So uh, we just got to continue to prepare our guys for those situations. Uh, the one-minute offense was outstanding uh, to go down and, and score that touchdown. And uh, our defense held up when we needed to. I like I say, missed a field goal, Sharp says in the foot uh, when we didn't get those points. Um, gave him a pick, and um, defense did a good job of holding to a field goal, I think it was. So, uh, really proud of our guys, coaches, entire university. This is a big win for us. But, <clears throat> you know, we're going to take a couple of days and get back and make sure that we're getting better, develop our entire roster, uh, work on ourselves for – the next three days before we go into the next opponent. Oh, we've been here before. We we've done this. Uh, actually, we do it actually pretty good against our defense. So I had really uh, our coaches did a great job. I, f I had great confidence that we could move the ball. Uh, the looks that we uh, prepared for for one man offense, they were the same exact look. So. Uh, Got to commend Christian, the O-line, for giving Christian time, uh, making the right decision about throwing the ball away. Uh, Talik made a hell of a catch uh, as well. So everyone contributed on the drive, and, you know, it's a great team victory. Coach, um, matter of fact, I spoke with Talik after the game. He was just talking about how he felt like, you know, moments in the game he gave it away, but on that last drive, he felt like he made up for it. What was it about that last drive where you went to Tyreek? He made some plays and ultimately you know, um, moved down the field. Oh, he made a bonehead decision on the uh, the kickoff return by not fair catching the ball. Um, we probably should have had our uh, kickoff return unit on the field as opposed to handstand. They had three timeouts. Um, so that was bad on the coaches. Uh, we got to learn from that. But really shouldn't have put him in that situation. But <clears throat> we went over a lot of those situations. Uh, we do this film study on different scenarios, and uh, we always tell our guys we can't practice every single scenario. But when they come up, we got to be able to process and execute what's going on. Uh, so that'll be a learning moment. It's always great to learn when you can learn with a victory. So uh, just proud of our guys, proud of our coaches. Um, uh, you know, got some guys banged up. Um, so you know, linebacker stepped up. Justin Abraham didn't play this game, so. I thought the guys filled in for him and did an outstanding job. And IG went down and Chimes came in and, and finished the game out at corner. So a lot of guys had that next man up mentality. Um, and, you know, that's why we practice the way we do. That's why we try to develop our entire roster and make sure everyone's getting reps. And uh, as the season progresses, that's going to happen again. So uh, we're always going to develop our roster and try to make sure we're ready to play when our numbers call. The first of few games you're struggling in the red zone and even on third downs, but you scored on every possession that you were within 20 and you were more than 50% on third down conversions. Just what has changed offensively to be more successful in those situations? Um, uh, it's game to game. I mean, I don't think it's it's just more success. I mean, you got to execute, of course. Uh, everyone has to run routes at the right depth. Uh, the quarterback have to deliver the ball. We got to protect the quarterback, keep the, the rush away from the quarterback. Backs are also part of that protection. Uh, so it's, it's always a team effort to to, to get and convert third downs. Uh, like I said, we do this every single week. And the more reps we get in all these different situations, they're just bank reps. And it becomes a lot of recall for our players. And you just have to adapt the game plan to what we're going to see 
from that team. And our, our, our offense did a great job on third down. Big turn has been Ted Hurst. And just his emergence from minimal playing time to start his career to being a major target to the big day for him. What about your development and maturation with you and the Memphis program? No, we saw it on the tape at Valdosta State. Like this dude here, he got something. So, uh, you know, we we saw it there, and we were very lucky to get him. Um, uh, just really pleased with how he's grown in the offense. He came in late, so uh, it is a lot with our offense, but it, it takes time, and uh, you know, and that's for our entire uh, all three units, special teams and defense. So, all our coordinators are putting in the foundation, and we're continuing to grow and build what our offense, defense, special teams can be. So it just takes a little bit of time, but I know this process works because I've been a part of it for the last eight years and uh, it's, it's going to work here. I will celebrate it tonight and a little bit tomorrow and move on to the next one. So don't mean a whole lot. I mean, still got, I mean, more guaranteed opportunities, nine more guaranteed opportunities. So. We're going to prepare for the next one and uh, just just take it from there. Uh, they were totally different than when I've seen the last four years that Clark was there. So um, that, that offense definitely changed. It, it, it's not the same offense. Um, defensively, they kept some of the same concepts and philosophies, but that changed a little bit too. So. Um, you know, it, it, you just have to adjust and, and believe our eyes, believe in the plan and what we practice for, they, they showed. So uh, it didn't catch us by surprise what they were doing. It meant everything. I mean, you know, all those scenarios, you, you can always go back and probably count four or five moments in the game that can go either way that are the turning points in games. Um, and, and that was a big part of the game. I mean, we're always want to try to win the turnover battle and uh, win the explosive play battle. Those are two big indicators in wins and losses. And, um, you know, our kids are understanding that playing to win and the emphasis on those situations, including scoring in the red area and making stops, you know, in the red area from a defense perspective. So total team effort. Uh, like I said, coaches, coordinators, everyone in the organization did an outstanding job. Appreciate the fan support. Uh, we still got to build in that area and um, try to get more uh, students, uh, faculty, city of Atlanta out to our games. Um, you know, I think we got a, a good product. I know it won't be an issue in two weeks of having a packed stadium, so uh, just don't know the game time yet. What about Christian his development? Mm -hmm. Look like to maybe not need like not need being the starter, but just look like his development you know, as the quarterback and what he's executing well for you. Uh, like I said, he, he's uh, he's 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 pretty astute to what we're trying to do. Um, he's a pleaser, and then he works extremely hard by coming in extra and meeting, and you know he, his voice is being heard now. He tries to be a vocal leader as well. So just really pleased in the growth that he's shown. Uh, you know, coming in late. Uh, and just spending all the extra time <clears throat> with our coordinator and quarterback coaches uh, just to get to where he is. Uh, we still got a long way to go uh, as a team unit, and uh, it's a lot of growth to be made, and you know that's what this bye week will be. It'll just be about us working on ourselves, developing <clears throat> our other members of our roster on our twos and threes to get them ready to play because uh, you know, it's a long season and injuries are part of the game, but – we're always a next man up mentality, and we're not going to create excuses when guys go down. The expectation is for whoever plays got to step up and play. You couldn't have asked for a better outcome on that kick that resulted in safety. Were you trying to set something up like that? And when you had to kick out of runs earlier in the game, was that another instance of trying to go kind of that short kick there and make a decision? Yeah, actually, we changed up the kick on the, uh, the safety. Um, uh, didn't know he was going to make a mistake. Like I say, those scenarios come up, and uh, the returner for Vandy just made a mistake by doing what he did. Um, so uh, that wasn't planned, but it was a great kick, had great hang time, and uh, the, the off return of panic. He wasn't a normal guy that catches the kicks, so we kicked away from the main guy um, just to change things up and also to give uh, Braden a little bit more room because he, for some reason, kicks one out of bounds every game. Uh, so I said, let's, 
let's go deep right and we did and it paid off yeah they, they got a really good football team um you know um really proud of our guys i can't say enough um for how they play and how they competed um just trusting the process and keeping our composure throughout and just kept believing in one another and you know that's why we had all these growth sessions this summer and our kids really connecting with one another and the coaches and um i i know they're going and they have been giving their all uh, we've been getting the very best out of our kids and they've been really paying attention to what the message has been from week to week and uh we just got to continue that um it's new atlanta you haven't been seeing the tweets or anything with us everything we do we say new atlanta that's all we're just trying to create a new uh mindset um a new culture here uh, one thing we we want to be as consistent in everything we do and we're gonna have a high standard and the things that we feel are important to building a consistent championship program, uh, which it's all about recruiting, uh, then developing the players that we have and making sure our kids have an opportunity to fulfill their graduation requirements, then move on and live their 70 year plan with a great job, hopefully in the city of Atlanta. So we just feel like the city of Atlanta provides so many different resources for not only our football program, but for any student athlete that comes here because of the, uh, Fortune 500 companies, just any realm of uh, employment that you really want to choose is here. So it's up to us to put our guys in front of the right people. So when they do graduate, they're going straight into their uh, career plan. And if, or if once they get done playing in the NFL, they've made those connections and they can go and follow their career from there. Because football is not going to last forever. It has a retirement date on it for everybody. So. You know, the big picture is how can we put our guys in the right place to fulfill the 50 year plan? Did you guys earn any extra time off for this, uh, for this break or is it right back to work? Uh, they got treatment tomorrow, Twitter too, and that's it tomorrow. Um, so they were happy about that uh, when I announced it. So it's a little bit, it'll be a little bit, but like I said, we're going to enjoy this victory. Uh, victories are it's hard to win. So uh, we're always going to enjoy them. And, then when it's time to flush it and move on, we will. Yeah, um, a big DNA trait of ours is connection. And that's what we've been trying to kind of build since we've been here, where we will have these growth meetings, small group meetings, where uh, a couple of coaches would lead the discussions. And uh, there was always a message. But being a connected team, I think, builds um, and also allows our guys to play that much harder for one another. Uh, a lot of our guys and coaches share their why and, and what they do and why they do things. And they were really, really uh, vulnerable. They really opened up uh, and they were very honest about the things that they were sharing. And, and when you know your team and you know your teammates deeper than just from a surface level, uh, it, it just adds a lot more value to, that's really my brother. I know his sister went through this. I know he went through this. I know his mom ha had this to happen to her. So, uh, we will continue to do that and you know it's just part of us growing closer as a team and you know we'll have a, a session this this bye week as well where we kind of do a growth group no we're going to do a bye week just like I did at the last place for the last 8 years so it'll be the same exact script uh same schedule um, uh, I believe in that, and we'll do that, and we'll start thinking about the next opponent uh, Thursday, and that's when we'll first introduce.
our next opponent. But we're going to work on ourselves Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then um, then we'll get into them and then give our guys, you know, the weekend off and we'll get back on the grind. Uh, that's the one thing I'm proud of our kids for just believing in how we're doing things because it was a, definitely a, an adjustment. <laughs> the way we practice is very hard. Uh, not only not from a physical standpoint all the time, but a mental standpoint. I mean, we do a lot of walkthroughs, a lot of – it can get like, God dang, Coach, we got another walkthrough, we got another this. But uh, as long as we see the fruits of our labor pay off, which this is part of that fruit, I think they will buy in more to, to what we're doing. You talk about a lot of growth and leaving Martino behind. One of the instances, of course, when you drive with Vanderbilt, took the lead. Before you all went down to score, there was a few penalties. I want to say it was a. Yeah, it was a personal foul by Sir Mills. Yeah, very. As a coach in that moment, <coughs> and then coming, you know, after the win, what's going through your mind through that? And um, what are your takeaways? Um, as long as it's time on the clock, we're, 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 we're in the game. So, you know, it's just part of the building that culture that you're, it's never over until the clock strikes zero. Uh, we're going to play for as long as it takes, uh, whether it's overtime or whatever the case may be. Um, I had great confidence in our offense, and, you know, we actually talked about letting Vandy score once they got to the one. So one guy didn't really get the message, but we knew, hey, let them score so we have time to, to go back down the field. So um, actually, we just showed that scenario. It showed it Friday. It happened with um, Kansas and uh, I forgot the other team, but it was – it happened, and uh, they let them score. It was Oklahoma. That's what it was. Kansas and Oklahoma showed that scenario Friday, and it came up um, just amazing. We don't need that to happen. Like I said, we could have took care of business a lot earlier, but.